It was uh, Christmas Eve and uh, we were all packed in the car. This was uh, full of Christmas gifts from floor to, to the roof and we were driving to their grandparents' house for celebrations. The kids were in the back seat and uh, they were all messing around and um, they were talking about uh, the big evening when Santa Claus was, was coming and the big brother was teasing his twin sisters that he would receive the biggest gifts. So we had a really happy moment in the car. And when we uh, uh, had driven maybe one hour, 15 minutes, we saw a car coming towards us and kind of um, lost the grip of the, of the road. And, um, and then it all went black. And I think we all thought that this was the end. Remember the, the car came with a very high speed towards us and suddenly we woke up in a ditch. And then the screaming began. Yeah. After that. First it was a silence and then the kids were starting to scream. Mommy's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then we looked at our car as well. And it was also total, totally crashed. Nothing left of the front. No. And Christmas presents all over. <clears throat> yeah. All over the car. Exactly. Do you remember what they said, the ambulance people? No. We didn't think anybody was alive no. in that car. They thought we all were dead. Being so close to death, um, mm. It could have happened that we could have died looking back at it now. It has changed, of course, because you realize that anything can happen in a matter of seconds. I definitely enjoy life much more now, and, and I know that there might not be a day tomorrow, so of course you want to live life today, even if you are in control an accident can happen very suddenly and change everything. Hello everyone, my name is Anna. Hello everyone, my name is Martin. And uh, as you saw, we survived this car crash two years ago. And directly after the crash, we woke up in the ditch. The car was dark and we were surrounded of airbags. We looked at each other to see that we were okay. And also we looked in the back seat to see that the kids were okay. And then the panic set in really quick and we all wanted to get out of the car as fast as possible. So I jumped out of the car and brought the kids with me. Yeah, 
and it was such a relief to see that the kids were all right standing outside the car. And the kids were screaming, they were panicked. Uh, we called 112. And uh, after that, I remember I called my mother as well. I said that we have just uh, been involved in a very serious car accident. And we will be delayed for the Christmas celebration. And she was crying, of course. <laughs> and then we started to wait for the ambulance people. Uh, since it was cold outside, we got help from, from passers-by to bring the kids back into another warm car to not get cold. Mm. And then when the ambulance arrived, they were really afraid for Anna. So they rushed her off to the, to the hospital as quick as possible. Yeah. And that, of course, also panicked the kids even more. And the firefighters were really nice with the kids. They handed over this uh, teddy bear and said that this teddy bear will keep you safe and will make everything OK. And then uh, we started to wait for Anna's brother and father to arrive. Uh, to have someone drive us from the, from the accident site. And uh, I followed in the car back to their house to celebrate Christmas Eve, waiting for Santa Claus and opening gifts. But after a couple of hours, I realized something is not right. I have been injured also. So I went to the hospital. Yes, and we celebrated Christmas Eve at the hospital together that year. And of course, um, this car crash has changed uh, our perspective of life. And um, we are so happy that we are alive and that the kids also are OK. Uh, but of course, you do enjoy life much more today, since uh, you don't know if there will be a day tomorrow. So that's our story. And uh, now we're looking forward to the next chapter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Thank, Thank you. you, Martin. And uh, I think it's stories like yours that uh, give us the energy to continue our work with safety. So thanks a lot that you shared it with us today here. Thank thanks. you for being here. Thank you. So welcome uh, all of you to um, this uh, Volvo Moments. It's uh, a new approach we have to meet with you, also to go into dialogue with you, and we are very glad to see as many of you joining us here today. We have, of course, chosen for the first Volvo Moments safety, because this part of the company purpose has always been, and uh, it's also why we have had for many years uh, this very bold uh, vision that nobody should be seriously injured or killed in a Volvo by 2020. So I think it's also a good occasion to summarize a bit where we are with that and, and how we really can reach our vision because we're coming closer to, to year 2020. So I think what we conclude looking into the data, we have done a lot with technical uh, means, passive and active uh, features in the car, but uh, really to come down to zero, you have to tackle uh, some issues which are much more human related. And it's basically three different things. We will talk about that with you today. It's uh, distraction, getting worse now with smartphones and texting in the car. It's uh, of course intoxication. It's not just alcohol, it's also drugs. But I think also there is an elephant in the room that we need to talk about, and that is speed and speeding, because speed kills. And, and I think it's really difficult to be serious about safety and not addressing that. And, and uh, right now we are, of course, also coming into a, a situation where we have the technical capability to do something about this. It has not been possible before. But I mean, now we can really let the car intervene if the driver is behaving bad. If whatever, I mean, just take one example, driving outside the school, should it really be part of the individual freedom to drive 250 outside the school? I think 
very few would argue with that. So, I mean, it's an obvious example that you are in a gray zone. And we really want to invite into this dialogue, which I think is a very important question. Do we have the right to intervene, uh, let the car intervene, depending on the de behavior of the driver? Or maybe even we have the obligation to do that. So I think this is really the question we want to invite for a dialogue. And uh, we don't have the exact answer to that. And uh, because there is, of course, also a limit how much of a nanny or a big brother you should be as a car manufacturer. But we definitely feel that it's part of our safety heritage to be leading this discussion and come to a, a good answer on this. And uh, today's event is about that. And um, that uh, is, of course, also why we have chosen to take one very clear message or measure, and that is limiting our car's speed to 180. We believe that is, uh, of course, a signal that this is something that's important. It's also a signal that we really don't think a car needs to be driven faster than 180. And uh, even if we would save only a few lives, it's still worth doing. Especially, it's also a signal to, of course, potential customers in the future. We want to attract really a responsible group of drivers that will make the machine human system safer. Volvo is also depending on responsible drivers. So I think this is a signal. Let's strengthen the Club 180. Let's strengthen the Volvo community and make that a safer community. I think that that is good for, for society and for our customers. Uh, so we are looking forward to your reactions here today. And uh, just to finalize, to this year we're also celebrating 60 years of the three-point safety belt. Introduced has probably saved over one million lives, not in Volvos only, but in all, all brands. And uh, this was something that we very openly shared with everybody. That was a decision in 1959. And we want to continue in this spirit, also with openness and sharing. And that's why we have decided also to share all uh, data that we have from our safety research, make it easily access accessible and open to anybody. And that way, we can also contribute to safer cars also of other brands. So with that, once more, welcome. And I would like to give the word to Lotta, who is going to tell us more about uh, what we're doing in this respect. So welcome on stage, Lotta Jakobsson. So hello, everybody. It's a great year today. It's 60 years anniversary since we put the three-point safety belt into production. And we, as you know, see it in every car today. I would say it's mostly likely the most important invention within uh, automotive safety. And um, we have shared it together with the human-centric design principles of that restraint. The idea of sharing knowledge and innovation with the industry and research community for safer roads goes hand in hand with the way we developed safety technologies. We developed the safety technology in our cars based on our own data, tens of thousands of rear walk accidents. This is the way we've been working for decades, exemplified by numerous innovations, starting with the three-point safety belt. Obviously, real-world data is the best way to ensure that cars are as safe as they can be in real traffic for real people. It goes beyond the standardized crash test dummies, which only come in limited sizes. And I can tell you that we're doing our very best to make our cars equally safe for all people, irrespectively of gender, height, weight, or shape. And we want the rest of the industry to do the same. So that's why we today announce our brand new project, EVA. Oh. 
world premiere. What do you do? Thank you. With the Project EVA, we highlight research and knowledge, starting off with a compilation or publication on occupant uh, protection, going way back to, six, to the 1960s. With the EVA project, we are making this data, these publications, easy, accessible and available for everybody. Because that research has helped to create innovation after innovation. It shows a working method or several working methods based on real-world data, which had been proven successful over and over again. Data specifically, real-world data, we have collected since 1970 a number, large number of real-world data in a representative and a continuous way, all in the interest of making our cars safer than ever before. The statistical data set enables us to do analysis for setting priorities, understanding consequences and mechanisms. And in addition, our accident research team, on duty 24-7 around the year since 1970, do on-site um, accident investigation. And that provides in-depth information, which is a wealth of information for people like me, being a biomechanical engineer. It helps me to understand the details of the injury mechanisms and the occupant's different needs in protection. Now we're sharing the knowledge from this data to help each car to become equally safe for all people. So let's give me some, some examples of innovations. You see some of them behind my back. In the 1980s, when the occupant protection in frontal impacts was highly addressed by airbags and front structures, we also started to address the challenges in side impacts. Our data shows that people of various sizes suffered in accidents when they were being impacted from the side. The protection strategy in frontal impact was not directly applicable for side impacts because of the short distance between the impact and the occupants. The data helped us to understand the mechanism and the importance for all people. That work resulted actually in four world firsts, starting with the car body design, we call it SIPS, the side impact airbag for additional protection of the torso, and two inflatable curtains, one that we know of mostly coming from the roof, and the other one coming from the door for those cars who doesn't have a roof, convertibles. These innovations are world first by Volvo. They're now basically in all cars and form an industry standard, all based on our research data, and the human-centric working method. Another example, in the 90s, we took on the challenge of addressing neck injuries and rear-end impacts. Although usually not life-threatening, they can result in long-term pain and disability. And they were, and they still are, the most frequent car occupant injury. The challenge was significant. There were no clear definition of injury location, nor established injury mechanism or criteria, nor a crash test dummy that could be used. So make a long story short, we digged into the real world data. We did some additional follow-up studies. It was clear that women had a higher risk than men, especially taller women, in addition to drivers. So we derived at some guidelines to follow when developing protection in the car. And our whip seat was developed based on those guidelines. It took some years, to be more exact, four years, before I got the, enough data to actually confirm the real-world effect of WIPs. And it was very pleasing. It was a happy day. Showing a reduction of initial pain in the neck by 30%, and as much as 50% for those having long-term pain lasting more than a year. And, in addition, we had managed to reduce the injury risk between men and women making whips just as protective for women as for men. More recently, 
we did a study looking at fractures in the lower spine because they didn't decline in the same extent that the other body regions did. Across all people, regardless of gender and size, we saw these injuries. Many of the injuries were as a result of a complex event, such as a runoff road crash. And as a result of deep dives into that data, a world first safety innovation was created and introduced in our SPA platform, the runoff road protection. So simply our front seat has um, energy absorption functionality completely unique for the market and way beyond what is required by a car maker. The biomechanical community knows that some individuals are more vulnerable than others. This will re be, re be reflected in a car crash unless you take special care to address this. Our human-centric focus started already in the early days, going 90 years back. Our founders, Gustav Larsson and Asa Gabrielsson, stated that cars are driven by people, therefore the guiding principle behind everything we do is and must remain safety. And our safety vision 2020 emphasizes this mindset, working with real-world data to make sure that eventually no one will be killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo car. This is our way of working because we believe that all people are equally safe and need to stay safe in traffic. And through the EVA project, we want to help the industry and society in joining us in this mission. So now let me welcome Jan up on stage, who will talk to you about how we plan to reach zero. Thank you, Lotta, and hello, everyone. Twelve years ago, I stood on this stage like this and announced our Vision 2020, that no one should be killed or seriously injured in a new Volvo by the year 2020. We are very proud with how far we have come since 2007, but we are not satisfied yet. We have come a long way with protective safety, and we have also pioneered collision avoidance, delivering safety for all and safety as standard. Our knowledge will take us to Vision 2020. It's now time to address the behavioral issues such as speeding, intoxication, and distraction, the prime contributors. The first one, speeding. You by now know what we want to do there. We stuck out our necks two weeks ago. First car maker to introduce speed cap on all cars. And no, 180 kilometers per hour will not alone do the job. But if we save one life, it's worth doing. Moreover, it's a strong signal. We want to make people aware of the dangers of speeding, about their behavior behind the wheel, about their ability to judge speeds correctly. But you know, not everyone was positive. It is a sign of weakness if the car can't safely go over 180 kilometers. Speeding has nothing to do with safety, when I'm driving faster, I'm sharper and have more attention on the traffic. But honestly, we didn't expect everyone to be positive. 60, 60 years ago, and for decades to follow, my old colleague Niels Bolin, the inventor of the safety belt, found skepticism to his inventions. In high-speed collisions, over 40 miles an hour, you have more chance of surviving when you are thrown out of a car than if you are strapped in within a seatbelt. Hmm? This new law is very disturbing. Being strapped in, a, in, in scares me. This is actually one of the primary reasons for why we are starting, started gathering uh, 
for our own data to prove the effect of the safety belt. Given time, we expect that a speed cap will be industry standard, just like the safety belt. But we're not stopping at the speed cap. We also want to look at speeding in the other end of the spectrum. Those small infractions that seem so tribal, but are so important. Around hospitals and schools here in Sweden, 30 kilometers per hour is the maximum speed. But many drive faster than that. It's very easily done. Those speed limits are in place for a reason. To pre protect the most vulnerable people in our society, older people and young children. In such an environment, the difference between 30 and 40 kilometers per hour can be the difference between an accident not happening and a tragedy. If you drive slower, both the driver and the car have more time to respond. More time to plan driving, more time to anticipate potential dangers and react. By slowing down, we give you more reaction time back. In the same spirit, we today announced the introduction of the Volvo Care Key. It will come as standard on all Volvo models worldwide next year. It allows you to set your own speed limits for yourself or when you lend the car to someone else. Many want to be able to share their car with family and friends, but don't know how to make sure that they are safe in the traffic. The Care Key provides a good solution to this, and it also gives you the extra peace of mind. For example, your teenager who only just got his or her driver's license. With the Volvo Care Key, we support better driver behavior. And now, let me hand over to Malin. She will talk about the other gaps that we need to work with. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. And Good afternoon. On top of speeding that John just touched upon, there are two other issues that we would like to share some time on. Distraction, intoxi intoxication. We all know that life can get you distracted. Text messages, children in the rear seat, a forgotten anniversary that you suddenly remember that really takes the focus off the driving. It's called life. It happens. Our overall aim is to avoid accidents altogether, rather than limit the impact of the accident. That applies to speeding, as Jan was touching on, but it also applies to intoxication and distraction. To address the issues linked to distraction and impairment, we today announce that we will install smart cameras inside the cabins in all cars in our next generation spa architecture. The cameras will read your eye behavior to make sure that you preserve vision and attention on the driving. Together with the camera, we will also un understand your coordination when driving, analyzing to be ensured that you have sufficient steering and brake reaction times for the critical situations that may appear in the, in the driving. We firmly believe that our Volvo drivers want to be the best drivers they can possibly be. So what we want to do and what we will do is encourage that desire and only help when it's needed. There will be no intervention as soon as you look away from the road. We focus on extreme behavior that may lead to serious injury or death. For example, if the car detects a complete lack of steering input for an extended period of time, that may be an indication of trouble. If the cameras at the same time notice that you, as a driver, you look away, you close your eyes for a lengthy period of time, or slumping in the seat, the car will definitely understand that something is wrong. The car will act with information and warnings to encourage you to be more engaged. This information and warning support phase, we will also shield the driver 
using brake and steering corrections for the extreme behavior. At the same time, the cameras will continue to watch over you to see if the warnings have an effect. If they do not, someone from Volvo on Call will call you and ask, how are you doing? Is everything OK? If there is still no response at this point, the ultimate step, of course, then, would be intervention. The car would slow down and safely park at the side of the road. But we need to take care, because at the same time as we increase the driver's support, we need to be vigilant not to create new safety issues. Over-reliance. This is a very real thing. When anti-lock brakes were introduced, some people thought you could drive more aggressively, which was obviously not the point with introducing anti-lock brakes. Similar, when we moved from front-wheel drive and, and offered all-wheel drives, some drivers thought that then they could drive without care on Swedish winter roads. So we need to make sure and focus on all our systems being designed so that they do not promote misuse. It's by understanding human behavior and the human limitations that we find the right balance between support and over-reliance. Our systems need to be there for you when you need them, not for you to use them. And to share his view on safety and the future, please welcome the head of R&D, Henrik Kirén. Thank you, Marlin. And uh, hello, everyone. Our 2020 vision reflects Volvo's true commitment to safety. We will never be satisfied. We will always do more. It's a customer promise, a promise to our own families and families such as Anna's and Martin's, a promise to present and future generations. Today, we announce a number of important things to reach our vision, all of them highlighting that we're expanding our attention to safety to include human behavior and the issues caused by speeding, intoxication, and distraction. We presented the EVA project, an initiative to share to our safety colleagues around the world in the interest for the wider car industry to make safer roads for everyone. We're introducing a speed limit of 180 kilometers per hour because it is never safe to drive at higher speeds than that. We are also developing automatic speed limits since the real issue with speeding is unique to every traffic situation time of day, weather, and environment. And we're introducing our care key to ensure that you're even safer driving at lower speed if you choose. So, finally, we're also addressing intoxication and distraction by introducing cameras inside the car, a system that will help and support you when you need it. Some of this will come now, and some will come in the next few years. Well, let's move a bit further. In future societies, traffic accidents may be a distant memory. Self-driving technology will take us beyond human limitations. These cars will not speed, they will not get distracted or become intoxicated. But that's not tomorrow. Autonomous cars have a tremendous potential, but only if they are designed, developed, and deployed with utmost care, responsibility, and attention to safety. This is how we will develop our self-driving cars. You can become a passenger without having to keep your eyes on the road or your hands on the steering wheel. You can relax and trust that the car will take care of the road ahead. An autonomous Volvo will be safe. And Erdjad is now here to tell you how. Welcome on stage, Erdjad.
Thank you, Hanik. We have indeed a lot of exciting technologies under development right now. Uh, on top of that, and um, making uh, that even better, we use a number of smart partnerships in our development work. Together, they will help us achieve a safe introduction of autonomous cars. For example, we work with NVIDIA on integrating their drive platform in our next generation of cars. Our scalable NVIDIA-based computer architecture will power all our future driver assistance systems. It's also the facilitator for autonomous driving in our next generation SPA2 platforms. By linking it to advanced 360-degree perception capabilities and the driver monitoring system, the core computer creates a prerequisite for safe autonomous Volvos. Cameras inside the cabin, as well as other sensors connected to the core computer, can help the car learn about you as a driver. It'll understand your habits, uh, your preferences, and uh, instead of putting the car in the center, we put you in the center, adapting to you, making you a better, safer, and more confident driver. That is, of course, if you want to drive yourself. If you don't want to drive, we will make sure uh, you can hand over the controls to the car. And we'll do that thanks to the, the software developed by Zenuity, our joint venture for driver assistance and autonomous software. Zenuity software will power all of our future Volvo autonomous systems. And it also comes with our next generation SPA2 platform. Dennis Nobelius, Zenuity CEO, is here today, and you can speak to him later. In order for the software to make the right decisions, it also needs the right input. So cameras and sensors will be needed to map out a detailed picture of the surroundings of the car uh, for it to be able to drive fully unaided. And for the most exciting of those sensors, the LiDAR, we work together with Luminar, who are also here with us today. A LiDAR uh, uses pulsed li laser signals to detect objects, and it's a crucial element in creating a safe autonomous car. It allows autonomous cars to navigate safely in a complex traffic environment at higher speeds uh, by providing these cars with reliable long-range perception capabilities. Together with Luminar, we have developed LiDAR technology with unprecedented perception capability. Our technology makes it possible to detect human poses, including individual limbs, such as arms and legs, at a level of detail not previously possible with this type of sensor. That means that you can detect not only that there is a human being here, but also where he or she is moving. It is also able to detect objects at a range up to 250 meters. That's a much further range than other LiDAR technology currently available. These perception capabilities allow for and reinforce the sufficient decision-making time that Jan was referring to earlier. And when I first met Austin Russell, the CEO of Luminar, what really impressed me and made me interested in collaborating was not just the technology as such that Luminar has developed. It's also that Austin and his team came from the same passion for improving safety that we have in Volvo, working relentlessly to create the building blocks for a safe autonomous driving. And what these and other partnerships signify is Volvo's commitment to smart development. We believe in the power of strategic partnerships, combining our knowledge of automotive with some of the most exciting technology firms in the world. And whether we work with partners or develop by ourselves, the ultimate objective remains the same to develop the safest autonomous cars possible. Thank you. So, now, Without further ado, I'd like to invite all of you to take the opportunity to speak with our safety experts. And around the room, you will now find experts on intoxication and distraction, speeding, over-reliance, and in this corner here, we will have experts on the history of sharing. And finally, in the room next door, you will find our fantastic partners developing Autonomous Drive together with our own experts on the subject. So please, let's get into interaction. Come down and visit each station. And thank you for joining us. <laughs> 